Today, we're going to look at some solutions that possibly lowering the temperature of the Ryzen 5800X. As you guys know, some chips, not all, do run pretty hot. We're going to try some tweaks as well as try this today. This is the new Be Quiet Dark Rock TF2, a top full cooler. Let's see how it handles it and if any of our tweaks will work. Alright, so today let's talk about the Ryzen 5800X. I've done a few videos on this, a little bit controversial because the chip does run much hotter than the other Ryzen chips that I found. Now, this is easily explainable. First, it comes down also to the silicon lottery. I think the sample that I have just seems to run hotter than other 5800Xs, and a lot of people seem to have the same experience. A lot of my viewers had very hot running chips, and some viewers had some chips that ran considerably cooler. Now, that's certainly a very big variable. And of course, the second fact about the 5800X is that, yes, it does run hotter than the other typical Ryzen or even some Intel CPUs. It's sort of by design. AMD says that sort of the temperature limit is around 90 degrees Celsius so generally if it's running within that and it's still running fine there really is no significant problems with this chip it really does come down more to anecdotal experience and the experience of users seeing higher temperatures than they were used to in chips of the past so that's why some people were thrown off guard but it certainly is normal to have it inside of that range and now we're talking about basically the stock settings as we saw previously throwing more and more cool cooling solutions at this chip seem to actually do very little to really make it much better. With a good cooling solution like this that we'll talk about today, you can certainly minimize some of the impact of sort of the hotter running chip, but even when doing water cooling and more intricate setups, really this chip just runs hot off the bat if you have a particular chip that's going to do that. So not much that you can do to alter that except go into BIOS and change a couple of settings and things of that nature, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So now the first part, why does the 50 5800X run hotter than the other chips, sometimes, most of the time actually, even hotter than the 5900X, which is going to be more powerful, 12 cores. To put it in very simple terms, it just comes down to the design of putting 8 cores on a chip, as opposed to 12 or even 16, where you can actually spread that heat a little bit better. So here, the chip just runs really hot sometimes, because it's a very powerful CPU, and there just isn't quite the room for the heat transfer to more effectively take place, as there would be in perhaps a higher core chip where you're just going to have more surface area where you'll generally have more ability to have more watts spread out per core so that's just going to be sort of how the design is they really did pack a lot of power in order for it to boost high with the ipc and the fast clocks it's certainly going to be one of the bigger side effects of this chip now of course it's by design amd says up to 90 degrees celsius so it isn't a flawed chip by any means it's just the nature of having to put eight cores in sort of a tight space and have it run this powerfully you're just not going to have the same optimal and more efficient performance as maybe like a 5600x which is going to have a much lower tdp or a 5900x while it does have more power and more cores you can spread that out over more cores instead of just having eight so having said that let's approach a few different solutions to making your 5800x cooler and of course this will apply also to other ryzen chips of course the actual overclock numbers may be different so the first thing we want to do before going into BIOS we want to make sure that our hardware setup and airflow are actually going to be the most optimal that they can be now when a lot of people were reporting hot running 5800x people were blaming them saying that maybe the cooler was mounted incorrectly maybe the airflow was poor maybe there was something wrong with the way they installed the actual chip but in many cases and it may be true that in sometimes somebody could you know make a mistake when they're installing something maybe the thermal paste is isn't good maybe they didn't screw the cooler down enough for it to really be effective so that's why we want to make sure to get this out of the way make sure that everything is really within tolerance make sure that your cooler is in there perfectly without any issues that you remove the little sticker from behind the cooler that you make sure to screw it with the right tolerance so everything's nice and tight put on your thermal paste make sure that you have nice airflow through your case these are just the basics that you want to make sure before trying to do anything in BIOS because if any of these things are wrong it doesn't matter what settings you're going to change you're not really going to have that big of an effect and of course for this chip speaking of the hardware we're going to talk about the dark rock tf2 the tf is going to stand for top flow now as you see with the design of this particular cooler it's a top flow much like you would get let's say if you bought a ryzen 5600x you're going to get a top
top flow sort of cooler as opposed to having the side flow where optimally the air would go from the front to the back. This is going to be very useful in a smaller case and a smaller build where a top flow setup is going to be desired. This is going to allow you to have that air coming in straight through the top as opposed to the sides. That's really going to depend on the type of case that you're going to use. It's also going to make it easier in many cases with RAM and motherboard compatibility. And of course it does have a 230 watt TDP as opposed to the the previous the shadow rock slim that we tested was a 160 watt tdp and that one still did a pretty good job with the 5800x but this one should be able to deal with the 5800x at least in terms of its best potential and much more powerful cpus as well 230 watt tdp gets pretty close to sort of the top of the line type of air coolers in order to dissipate as much heat as possible now installation was very very simple on this amd motherboard it comes with everything that you need to put it in place including the thermal paste don't forget to add that as well the mounting mechanism is very easy to use very intuitive even with this cooler you can easily see the screw and put it in after everything is mounted and of course i usually put the fans in last these are great silent wing fans very powerful very very quiet and aesthetically i think the cooler looks really awesome as well it has sort of like that sandwich design and as you notice it is a double cooler you do have those two separate heat sinks there and you're also going to be able to put two fans which basically means that you can run them at lower speeds and have as much cooling performance most of the time as if you ran only one fan at a higher rpm these are really quiet anyway so even if you run these pretty high you're really barely going to hear them the fan is 135 millimeters and it's a funnel shape actually very quiet that really helps not only with the cooling performance but keeping the noise really low it's about 27.1 dba so you're barely going to hear it even when this thing's going at 100 percent when i was testing i just left them at 100 percent since the noise profile was actually very pleasant and didn't bother me at all so let's go back to the 5800x my chip in particular and i use cinebench to test generally other people were testing well over 6,000 on Cinebench R20. In general, I couldn't really get it near that amount. I would generally get 5,500 or less on stock settings with just the RAM set to their profile one. Basically, I would only get around 5,200 to maybe 5,500 with a Cinebench. And of course, this would produce temperatures around 86 to 88 degrees Celsius. Now, this Dark Rock Top Flow cooler did improve the temperatures of the 5800X as opposed to the slim cooler I was using before. It seemed to drop at around 2 to 3 degrees, which is what you would expect with a much bigger heatsink, as well as having those dual fans on there. So then I went into BIOS and I decided to try various steps that would actually lower the temperature. The first thing I'd made sure that PBO or performance boost overdrive was set to off completely disabled, not on automatic. And now this made absolutely no difference to either the temperature or the score that I was getting in Cinebench that I tried to adjust, which I've had success with, with the other AMD Ryzen CPUs. That's PBO, the performance boost overdrive. Typically, if that's on, that's gonna boost the CPU, you a lot higher performance in Cinebench while also raising the temperature. With the 5800X this seemed to actually have no effect leaving it on or off which is a little bit strange. I'm still trying to get to the bottom of why exactly that is but but my best guess is that it's already pretty close to the thermal limit in the stock settings without PBO so that means that when PBO is on there's really not that much of a difference any more headroom there that it's trying to pull out. I just really do think that my particular chip just really isn't that great of an example. So PBO off actually did absolutely nothing to the temperature or to the performance even using the new curve feature to sort of tune it a little bit and adjust it really didn't make any significant differences in temperatures or performance either now in the asus bios you can actually limit the temperature that the chip will go up to but all that's really going to do is just limit your performance i got much lower cinebench numbers than the 52 to 5500 i was getting before for example if you put 80 degrees celsius it's only going to allow it to sort of go up to that limit as soon as it reaches it it's going to stop really boosting the cpu giving you significantly lower performance now i also played around with some other settings like the tdc ppt trying to lower some of that power and wattage on the cpu none of them really made that big of a difference basically where the differences started to really matter more is when you start to get to either the automatic overclocking or the manual overclocking where you can sort of set a voltage and sort of the clock speed that it's going to boost to so just to see what it would do since this is an asus motherboard 
I tried their automatic overclocking. You can choose between a TPU option one and a TPU option two. The one that gave me the best performance was TPU option two. Now, the temperatures did drop drastically to around 60 degrees Celsius, which is a pretty big drop from like 86 to 87 degrees Celsius, but the Cinebench score stayed around 5,200 or so. So it didn't really go up too much, but also didn't go down too much at all. This particular chip just does not seem to be able to boost really high while maintaining nice voltages in order to get those much higher Cinebench numbers. Probably the most stable manual settings I was able to get it to was, was around 4,400 megahertz in terms of the boost. The voltage was about 1.35 and the temperature stayed around 81C to 83C. So that's a little bit of an improvement for sure. Maybe a five to six degree improvement. Definitely not as bad as before. And the Cinebench score was now much closer to that 5,500 to 5,600 score. Of course, still far shorter than 6,000, but did perform a lot better than before. And these settings were definitely stable. I did try some other settings that had better temperatures and performance. For example, I dropped the voltage down to 1.25 and I put the chip up to 4.6 gigahertz. This also gave me a higher Cinebench score. Temperatures were now in the 70s. So that definitely dropped it a considerable amount, generally between 73C to 76C after a few runs. Now this setting, maybe because the voltages were a little low and the clock rate a little bit high, weren't the most stable all of the time. For example, sometimes in Cinebench after multiple runs, it would crash. So it seems like the lower clock speeds, like 43 or 4400 megahertz, with having a little bit more voltage was still enough to lower the temperature between five to maybe eight degrees Celsius while getting you at least pretty close performance to the stock numbers that were almost 90 degrees Celsius previously, because when it's sort of on automatic with the Asus motherboard, it's really gonna give you very high voltages and that's really part of the reason why this chip is running so hot. So I'm still gonna tweak this a little more, but at the end of the day, if you want the 5800X to perform cooler while maintaining the similar or even higher scores, you're gonna have to manually overclock it. It's not too complicated. You just have to find what works right for your chip. I could not get my chip to get anywhere near 6000 in Cinebench. It's just probably the silicon lottery would explain why this chip runs so hot, but I was able to get it stable with much lower temperatures with still similar performance as when it was running hotter before. So I consider that a win in my book and it's not ideal, but it's definitely a pretty good compromise. Now with this chip, you definitely do want to have a cooler like we were talking about before, the Be Quiet Dark Rock, the TF2, at least something like that or an AIO, maybe a 240 to 360 millimeter AIO. I don't think this is a chip you want to go and skimp on the cooling. You definitely want to put as much at it as reasonably possible. I think a 240 millimeter AIO should definitely be more than fine for most chips or a nice beefy air cooler like this, like the TF2 or even the Dark Rock Pro 4 if you don't need a top flow type of cooler. So to summarize, the 5800X out of the box most of the time will be a pretty hot running chip depending on your motherboard and the stock BIOS settings. Pretty much the best way to get these temperatures down and still maintain performance like you had before will be to do these manual overclock settings. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to thank Be Quiet for sending me this cooler in order to evaluate and review. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.